Coming up next, I'm going to share with you the steps to become a great leader and then how a career change saves someone's life. Plus, we take your calls. And here's the great news. It all starts right now. All right, folks, welcome to the Ken Coleman Show, where we discuss you, specifically what you were born to do. And we're going to look at that work context about that contribution, because there's relational contribution and professional contribution. And what we talk about here on the Ken Coleman Show is that professional contribution. And interestingly enough, when we are on purpose in our professional life, we are on purpose in our personal life. And you can't deny that. Not only does the data back me up on that, but if you aren't happy in your work life, if you aren't fulfilled in your work life, it's going to spill over to your personal life. And so this is about money. This is about meaning. It's about both. Because I want you to make the money that you desire to do the things you want to do. But I also want you to experience tremendous meaning in your work. And so that's what we focus here on The Ken Coleman Show. It is a caller-driven show, 844 844- 747-2577. That's a toll-free number to jump in. I want to say hi to all those watching live on YouTube and to those of you who are watching later. Good stuff to get to in today's show. And I want to start off with, again, some more Stage 5 content, get promoted. Because the reality is, is that if we're on purpose, we want to get promoted. And the other reality is, is that many times getting promoted means you are moving into some type of manager, leadership, position. And it's terrifying. If you've never done it before, it's terrifying. It's a very natural thing to be afraid of. But the reality is, is that when we realize that we can lead and that leadership is a skill, not just a role, that we can improve on our leadership, then it takes the fear away. And so I wrote an article that is on RamseySolutions.com. That's the mothership, how to be a good leader. And I unpack many different qualities and attributes. But today I want to pull from that article, How to Be a Good Leader, at RamseySolutions.com. If you want to do a deep dive and read it, uh, you certainly can. But I pulled out just five specific actions that if you take these actions, you are going to become a good leader and have the opportunity to be a great leader. Very simple. We're going to run through them quickly and then get right to the phones. The first is love your people. Love your people. I think a lot of new leaders, even experienced leaders, forget this. It becomes a blind spot. Some never really incorporate this idea into their leadership. Just to love your people. Love them. You don't have to read a leadership book to learn how to love people. You don't have to go to a leadership conference or listen to a leadership podcast to know how to love people. Number two, praise your people. Same thing. I don't know that you need to go to any kind of conference or study anybody, any leadership expert, to learn how to praise people. But if you love them, that's how we care for them individually. We connect with them. We listen to them. We show them that they matter to us. That's the love. The praise. Find ways to catch them doing something good. Just praise them. Even if it's a little thing, praise them. Praise them regularly. Number three, get the right people. Now, those first two... You got to do that whether they're the right person or not. If they're in the wrong seat of the bus or they're just, they're not going to make it long term, you still need to love them and praise them until you can move them on or move them to a new seat. But you better get the right people. You want to be a good leader, a great leader? Let me just tell you something right now. You need to get the right people on your team. I, I've made this comment before to prove a point. It's a little jarring for some of you. But you really find out how great a coach is in a sport based on their ability to to assemble a team. And then when they lose a couple of great players, you find out how good the coach really is. They may not be so good after all. I'm just telling you to pay attention to Bill Belichick's record in New England. One season removed from Tom Brady. Now he's in his second season. He's got a losing record. Uh, We're just going to find out how great Bill Belichick really is when he doesn't have a great quarterback. I'm not knocking Bill Belichick. What I'm saying is, He was great when he had Tom Brady. We'll see if he's great. We'll see if Mac Jones can become great. I don't know. Tom Brady goes to to, uh, Tampa Bay, and look how great Bruce Arians is all of a sudden. 
I'm telling you, part of leadership is getting the right people on the team. Fourth, develop your people. Develop them. Great leaders develop their people. They invest in them. They don't just love on them and praise them. They help them become better. They invest in the training, investing in their personal development. Leaders, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not using Smart Dollar from Ramsey Solutions as a benefit to your team, you're missing an opportunity to be great because if you can develop your people in their personal finances and they win in their finances because of the paycheck they're also getting, they look at you as somebody who invested in them, and you did. And the return on that is increased productivity, increased loyalty, all the things, better culture fit, everything. Finally, empower your people. Once you develop them, you got to get them to the point where you go, okay, go do it. Now it's your turn. Go do it. I've developed you. Go make mistakes. It's okay. I'm not going to fire you when you make a mistake. But empower them to be their best. So love your people. Praise your people. Get the right people. Develop your people. Empower your people. Those are just five things that you can do to be a really good leader. Again, the article is how to be a good leader. You can read the entire article. We're going to do a much deeper dive so much more for you to take from that article, RamseySolutions.com. All right, let's do it. I love coaching you folks. I love counseling you, counseling you, and I love cheering for you. And that's what this show is about. A reminder before we dive into the conversation, you can call into that toll-free number. You can change your name and your location. If it's a sensitive call, if you're in a very toxic, even dangerous situation, we want to get you some help, not just some guidance on the air, but we're here to help you. And we'll protect your identity. 844-747-2577. Let's go to Shay now, who is on the line in Indianapolis, Indiana. Shay, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Good afternoon, Ken. How are you? Shay, I'm living the dream. What are you doing? I am on my lunch break, living the dream as well. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. I am concerned about how I feel about my job. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't have a high morale in my job. I've been with the company in various roles for 15 years. Um, I'm experiencing burnout, and it affects my outlook at work. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to determine if I should leave the company and the um, perks that come with it. Um, They offer tuition reimbursement. I'm fully vested. Or do I seek employment elsewhere? Um, mm-hmm. I would like to work from home. Um, currently, the company does not offer any positions uh, working from home. So I'm just trying to figure out what my next move is. But I am mentally exhausted in my current position. Yeah. Well, I've talked about the five causes of burnout, which I think is really build up on the heart. And then burnout are, is essentially the symptoms. And, um, I, you know, I'm really curious what's causing you burnout. What, I've, I've got five main reasons. I'll just list them quickly. You tell me if any or all are applying to you. One is you just have no passion for the work. You don't love the work. Two is you are in a toxic environment. I mean truly toxic, okay? Not just difficult. I mean it is super unhealthy uh, environment. Three is you're overwhelmed. You feel like you're drinking from a fire hydrant. Imagine me just sticking your face two feet from a fire hydrant and letting that baby go. It's just like, whoa. Okay. Four um, is that you feel underappreciated. You just don't feel valued, seen. And then five is you're bored. What sticks out to you? And if I'm missing something, how would you describe what's causing this burnout? Um, It would be no passion and bored. Undoubtedly, those two. There you go. So very interesting, folks. Pay attention to Shay right now. Experiencing extreme burnout, physically, mentally exhausted, and the causes are she doesn't love the work, no passion, and as a result, she's bored. Because I think everybody, Shay, thinks, well, it's toxic, it's all these things, and in all reality, you're just emotionally done because you can't remember the last time you felt challenged. Can't remember the last time you walked into work going, man, I can't wait to tackle this. So here's Yeah, that was like the, the day one, like the first day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me so you're telling me for fourteen years and so many odd days you haven't loved the work. Wow. Well, in this current position, in this current position that I've been in for nine months with the company, um, I guess for maybe about a month, 
two months or so, I had the passion and the drive. It was new. But due to the nature of the work that I do um, with COVID, um, my outreach work has declined. So a lot of my time now is spent in a cubicle at the office. And that is not what I signed up for. Okay. So now Um, what we have to do is let's just go, let's just go back like detectives and let's just examine your body of work, your entire 15 years there, plus wherever you were before that. And the reality is, is we're doing this because we need to identify the kind of work that would fire you up. And yeah, I think you know what it is. Forget job title, forget company right now. Describe the work that if you spent 75 to 80% of your day doing this kind of work, you would love the work. What is it? Well, um, I love helping others, um, those who are underserved, um, seniors, children, single mothers. Um, I love volunteer work at my church. Um, I do have a passion for like fitness and improved health. That's a current passion of mine. It's a, it's a fairly new one as well. Sure. Um, any type of decluttering or beautification of anything like mm-hmm. landscaping, indoors, outdoors, like those types of things mm-hmm. make me feel good about like the before and after work. Yes. Um, Okay. Yeah. So service. Right. So, so I think you're so, I think you have heavy, if you were to take my get clear career assessment, I think you'd score high on influence and service as your mission results that matter to you. As long as you're driving influence, that would be people change and driving service, right? That's again, people focused. Is that right? Does that sound right to you? Yes, it does. All right then. And so the work we're talking about, there's that when you talk about landscaping and you talked about, uh, physical training, exercise, nutrition, stuff like that, that falls in that creating and solving. It's like you're, you're solving certain problems, but they're people related, except for that landscape piece, which is just that plays to your creative thing. So I wouldn't think too hard about that. That might be something you mm-hmm. just go, you know what, as long as I'm doing some landscaping on the weekends and kind of playing that creative thing there, that before and after. But I think what the clue is for me with the landscaping statement and the helping serving single moms or children or the elderly, I think restoration is the clue there. I think seeing something restored or something improved, that's the juice. Is that right or am I wrong? I don't mind being wrong. Okay, you just went into a cave. Can you say that again? I said that that is it. That that is on target exactly. Okay, great. So now here's what we determine. We've got to look at what do I need to make financially, which is what? Give me a range. Um, what do I need to make? Well, I'm a presuming um, I'm presuming you need to still make income, correct? Yes, certainly. Okay, then what's the number? I'm going somewhere with this. Okay, 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 okay. Um, 70000 Is that what you're making now? Uh, no. <laughs> Let me rephrase. <laughs> what are you making right now? Oh, okay. Um, 40000 Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't ask you if you wanted to win the lottery. I'm asking you. Oh, okay. We don't like the, G- the gig we're in now, correct? Right. Right. So we've got realities, though. So before we start yeah. brainstorming, we've got to start putting some parameters in place. We know the kind of work you want to do. You and I just discussed it from a high level. So practically speaking, now we've got to say, okay, I got to replace forty thousand dollars in income. Anything above and beyond that is great. So we now start to go, okay, I'm going to look out there in the world. I'm going to go, what are the jobs that allow me to serve the elderly? What are the jobs that allow me to serve single moms? What are the jobs mm-hmm. that allow me to sing, to serve children? You, you see where I'm going here? And then when you yeah. look at those jobs, you go, okay, I'm looking at the job. I'm looking at the job description. Do I have the talent to pull this off? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. I got the talent. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. I got it. I got it. So now <laughs> I've got the tools to be able to do it. I know I love the work as I read the job description, and it also matches up with my missional results. I'm serving people. I'm influencing people. Do you see how I'm using my methodology to make it practical for you? Yes, I do. And so now, Shay, we begin to see what's out there. And when you begin to see what's out there and it aligns with your purpose, it allows you to use what you do best, talent, to do work you love, passion, to produce results that matter to you, mission. 
when we see that, we go, okay, what do I need to do to get qualified? Right now, you're in stage one. you got to get clearer. You are clear, mm -hmm. but you need to get clear on what are the actual jobs and career paths out there. Then we start focusing on get qualified stage two. What do I need to learn? What do I need to do? How much is that going to cost me? And how long is that going to take? Now I've got a plan to get qualified. While I start the qualification process, if I have to, have to do any of that at all, you may not have to do much at all. Um, the reality is, is can you make $40,000 serving the elderly or children right now? I think absolutely you can. And I think that's minimal, minimal requirements for you to get qualified to do that. But we got to go look for it. And so we get qualified. We get connected to opportunities. I know people are going to open doors for me to get the gig. I get started. And now I'm moving into this new space where I'm doing what I was created to do, which is loving on people. That's who you really are. Sound right? Yes. That is perfect. That is correct. All right, Shay. You know what to do. I gave you your homework assignment. Don't overthink this. You know, folks, I say this all the time, and I want to apply this to everybody else. That's why I did the Get Clear Career Assessment. I just did a quick version with her on the air. But you can take that Get Clear Career Assessment, and I, me and the team, we wrote the questions. All you got to do is be honest and answer them. And it's going to spit out a report on your top talents, your top three, but it'll show you where you score on the other, the total of the 12 universal talents. Same thing with passion. There's 15 types of work that we've bucketed. It's going to show you what you love to do most and see where you score on others. So that you go, oh, I love this work. I like this work. Ooh, this work drains me. Folks, this awareness is a game changer. And then same thing on the missional results. There's six missional results. Achievement, creation, efficiency, influence, service, solution. What gives you the, what gives you the biggest payoff of the results of your work? For some of you, you want to drive creation. For some of you, you want to drive solution. Some of you, you're all about achievement, throwing up results, scoreboard. That's great. So as you begin to see this about yourself, you go, okay, where can I do this in the marketplace? And I look at the jobs and I just match it up. And it takes all of the fear and this overthinking, overanalyzing that we humans do. It takes it away. And what it does is allow us to use the heart to identify. Because talent is not enough. Those are the tools. You must love the work and you must care deeply about the results. It's love. It's love. It's the heart, and the heart's the ultimate indicator. 844-747-2577 is the number. I mentioned the assessment. I'm talking about it because I'm so passionate about the tool. I spent two years developing it. You can get it at KenColeman.com right now. And if you really want a crazy deal, get the bundle with the new book, From Paycheck to Purpose, with the assessment. It's 30 bucks for both of them. And if you want to know how the tools work together, the assessment is my compass. It helps me see where I'm supposed to go. The book helps me get up the mountain. 844-747-2577. Mary joins us right here in our hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. Mary, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my call. You bet, Mary. What's up? Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to get from where I'm at to where I want to be as far as, um, as, far as this goes. Um, okay. I just heard you, I was listening to the, the previous talking about the tests and stuff. I have what well, I've been told I have test anxiety. I don't do good on tests. I can't decide from A to B, you know, true to false. So it makes it really hard to take a test. <laughs> okay. So you talk so Mary, here's the deal. I need you to slow down because you're talking so fast. I'm having a hard time picking you up. So the challenge is what? You're trying to figure out how to get from where you are now to where you want to be. A, a company, a job, a career path? What are we talking about? Um I guess it would be my dream as it were. Um yeah. Okay. And I like I like I've taken. I was talking about my issue with test taking and how I badly failed test taking, such as the ones you mentioned. Uh, like they said, I was I, INSP, and I just did this one. I still can't make heads or tails of it. And it, <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, even when I do for employment, for example, too, I get the test. I always fail those ones. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's 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 uh, let's move beyond the test taking. I get it. I struggle with test taking as well. Always have. Um, mm -hmm. But let's just talk about your heart. What work do you really want to do? I think you know. The way you started off the call, it appears to me that you, you have a good idea, or at least a general idea, of what you would love to do. What is it? Well, I really want to, like, make crafts for people in need. Okay. Tell me more about the people in need. What's their need? Uh, blankets, hats, mittens, basic necessities of life. Okay. So, 
So homeless folks, people that are, are in extreme poverty and don't have some of the basics that just make life more comfortable. That's your heart. Yes. Okay, great. Do you have to have a job that pays you a certain amount of money, or are we looking for just a straight-up passion project that just gives you tremendous meaning because you don't have to make money with it? Tell me your situation. Um, I'm in the same boat as people I would be serving. I'm My only bills right now are to keep my phone on, which is challenging, and keep the battery charged. I'm oh. basically living outdoors so right now. Okay, sweetheart. Well, now this is a whole different ballgame, okay? So what we've got to do is we got to get you stable. I love that your heart is to help people that are going through what you're doing. And I, you know, I've said this many times out of our pain. Many times we find purpose, but right now we got to take care of you first. So right now, dream job is not even on the table right now. Well, it, we may got, be, it may be, sorry. Um, it may be, excuse me. It may be the only option is due to my criminal history. Okay. All right. I'm all in for a challenge. I shared an article last week. I shared an article last week that more and more companies are turning to people with criminal records and they are offering them an opportunity. And and so I understand that that's a tough, tough, that's a new development. That doesn't mean everybody's doing that. And those are real challenges. But if you could prove to people that you have paid your debt to society and you've stayed on the straight and narrow and you were working in an area that maybe didn't have any connection to what you did criminally. I'm trying to protect your privacy here. Is it possible that you could walk in and you could help somebody today? Well, I find myself almost setting myself up for failure. For example, I have applied for jobs that I can't do with a bad back, for example. It's okay. almost like I'm setting myself up for something I'm going to fail. I'm like applying for jobs. Like I just talked to somebody the other day, just yesterday, about a job, and it was like call centers. Like I don't want to be a telemarketer. I've done that, been there, done that. Don't really want to go there again. Right. Well, you but, know what I mean? So well, I like, do uh, know what you mean, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. You are in a situation right now where the luxury of saying, I don't want to do that right now, that's not where we are. Um we've got to go do a job. And if someone will offer you a telemarketing position, then you need to go do it. And we start to bring in income and we begin to get a place to live and we stabilize and we fix the crisis. We've got to fix a crisis right now and a job or two jobs, even with a bad back, you do whatever you've got to do. The, and, and here's the deal, the criminal record. Let, let me just give you a story, an example, Mary from the article that I shared. There is a company that is helping place men and women that have a criminal record, and obviously there's got to be some boundaries. The story that I shared on the air cited an example of a woman who went to jail for tax fraud, right? So it's a financial crime. Well, when she showed up at the company, she was really good with numbers, so she applied for a role in accounting, and they were like, this is not a good idea. You have a criminal record for manipulating numbers, and the temptation is there. We don't want to do that. So what they did was they repurposed her and said, yes, you're really good with numbers, but you're also good with details. And they put her in an administrative position where she had no contact at all with finances. So, Mary, I would tell you that based on your criminal history, whatever that is, there's an area where you've got a stain, unfortunately, that's how society looks at it, on your life record. And so if you struggled in this area over here, then you need to find an area where you're going to contribute where the temptation doesn't exist. But I will tell you right now, in the greater Nashville area, for somebody who wants to work right now, you could go to a restaurant and you could be at the hostess desk and you could seat people and you could wipe tables, you could wait on tables there's stuff that you can do right now and make really good money to stabilize you and get you off the streets. That's where you've got to go right now. 844-747-2577. That is the number to jump in. 844-747-2577. According to a recent study, 55% of Americans say they're looking for a new job this year. The problem with that is they're looking, but they don't know what they're looking for. And that gets frustrating. So if you feel like now is the right time to do something new, but you're kind of struggling with what are the specifics, that's why I wrote my new book, From Paycheck to Purpose, 
the clear path to doing work you love. If you pre-order the book now, because it comes out in less than a month, November the 9th it comes out. If you pre-order now at KenColeman.com, you'll get over $100 in free bonus items and tools like our resume templates and a video course to help you beat the competition. Here's how you get it. You don't even have to go to the website. Just text the word JOB to 33789. Text the word JOB to 33789. Too many people don't know where to go, but they know they want to go. Get the book right now by texting the word JOB to 33789, and you're not going to have to choose between making an income and making an impact. All right, quick break. When we come back, more of your calls, more of the show. Don't move. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Our world is changing, but so are we. Now, we see a smile through someone's eyes. We conquer our struggles and cherish each moment because we are shielded through faith and assured by hope. And greatest of all, we love. The world is different, but so are we. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Uh, during the quick break, I was looking at the YouTube chat room. It's always fun to see folks uh, commenting here, so I want to give a shout-out. Soli C., or Solly C. She said, Ken's career assessment is on point. Well, thank you very much. And yes, it is. Now I want to point out, no assessment is perfect because you aren't, and you're the one that are answering the questions. But it's going to give you tremendous awareness. Check it out. Peter Ruggieri uh, says, I'm tempted to take the career assessment to see if it matches my current career. Peter, take it. If it's completely off base, you feel like it's talking about somebody that you've never heard of or never met, then I'll give you your money back. I said it live here on the thing. I trust you to be a man of integrity and not just try to cheat me out of the $30, uh, but go check it out. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, oh, Peter also said, uh, oh, Solly C says, Peter, give it a chance. She's like helping me out here. My kids need a new pair of shoes. Thank you, Solly. See, that's fun. Um, and then I love Peter's reply. I have a great used bookstore in my neighborhood that I found some of Ken's material. You may be able to save some money. Look at Peter, Mr. Thrifty, getting getting Ken's books for discount. I like where his head's at. I got no problem with that. It is what it is. So there you go. Hey, uh, some of you are thinking about making the move, but you're going, I, I – I don't have time to sit there and apply every day. I got a million things going on. I think I'd rather be miserable, Ken, than deal with the rejection and the no response from people when I apply. That's why I want you to work with my friends at ZipRecruiter, the number one hiring site in the U.S. This is a free resource to you. It's a one-click apply feature. You You apply for jobs quickly, and here's the best part. They give you all the details. They submit the application for you. They give you the details of who's looking at it, thumbs up on your profile, and companies that want your contact information. No stress, no time. One click apply. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. All right, back to the phones. Uh, and then we're going to get to a really interesting article that I can't wait to. I want you to hang in for this. Because you wonder sometimes, is my job killing me? Like, is that dramatic? Is that dramatic? I don't know. We're going to look into it. But first, back to the phones. John joins us in Omaha, Nebraska. John, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. How are you doing? You bet. How can I help? Um, I am a year and a half into the workforce, and I'm already on my second job. And... Um, I was just kind of wondering what the uh, line was between changing roles, pursuing your uh, kind of sweet spot, and job hopping, and if you could kind of help give guidance on that. Yeah. So tell me specifically why you think it's going to make you look like a job hopper. The amount of time you've been at this place versus moving on? 
Have you done Correct. this? Have um, you done this a few times before? Like, give me the give me the true timeline. Give me the last few years timeline that that makes you worried about looking like a job hopper. Okay. Um, all the way through college, I had the uh, same position, but that was a part-time position that ended upon graduation. Okay. After that, I graduated during COVID. So um, the jobs and connections that I had, those companies were not hiring at that point in time. And uh, I got a job in the finance, financial um, institution, and uh, that wasn't really where I wanted to be. How long were you there? Um, for a year. Okay. Um, and then I had the opportunity to get kind of a beginning role in a manufacturing company. Um, and uh, I would like to get to operations. So I was trying to use the proximity principle, getting around um, where people yeah. who are in operations roles are, where manufacturing is happening, because those roles take um, manufacturing experience. Yeah. Um, and, so uh, how long have you been in this current role after you left the financial world after a year how long have you been in the current role that you're in i've been here for six months and um the uh the company that i'm currently working for um i do not see a future there for me and that's the reason why i would potentially be looking why don't um, you see a future elsewhere um it is not a good cultural fit for me okay and but same industry. You've now figured out manufacturing is where you want to be. You just want to move up the ladder. Uh, correct. Okay. Do you have something you've got your eyes on that, that's right there waiting for you and you want to get after it? Um, yeah, there's a, a position opening that I kind of have my eye on, but I'm on the fence because I don't want to um, put a stain on that resume or potentially, you know, hurt. Um, yeah. future opportunities. All right. So let's assume that, that you applied today and they called you for a phone interview and mm-hmm. uh, they said, Hey, thanks for applying. Um, you know, we think you might be a good candidate. I'm curious why you're, how long have you been where you are? And you're going to say uh, six months and then they go, so why are you looking at moving to us? What are you going to say? Um, I would just say that my mission and values appear to align uh, with that company a um, little stronger than, where I'm at, and I think that that would allow me to grow and be a uh, successful employee for them. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you mean? It sounds really good, but what 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 do you mean by our mission of values? What's going on over there? What would you say to that? Um, there is an agricultural um, company, and it's about uh, having sustainable um, agricultural practices as well as maximizing efficiencies for right. the farmer. And I'm from a rural area. Versus um, the so company you're in now. Is what? What kind of what kind of manufacturing is the company you're in now? Uh, plastic material. See, see, man, listen, you just crushed that. You crushed it. Great job. Because you didn't poo-poo or, you know, throw anybody under. You didn't poo-poo the company you're at now. You didn't throw anybody under the bus. You said, um, I got into manufacturing from finance because I realized coming out of school, finance wasn't the jam. And I realized manufacturing was it. I jumped into manufacturing, and it has verified that I do, in fact, want to be in this type of industry. But when I found out about you guys, it's the values piece, the sustainable agriculture. Like, that is, that's my jam. And so that's why I want to get in with you all. It's just a much deeper connection. That's a great stinking answer. That, to me, does not look flaky. It does not look like a job hopper. It looks like somebody who's intentional. You're a young guy. All right. Thank you very much, Ken. Yeah. I, I, do you agree? I don't want to talk yeah, you into I, this. I mean, do you see where you don't look flaky at all? It looks like you're intentional. No, absolutely. And that's how I felt. But I just wanted to make sure that. Yeah, I'm glad you called. Come off the wrong way and kind of get another perspective on that. Yeah, so. no, I'm glad you called. But I, I want you to see that, I mean, this makes you look intentional, not, uh, you know, some emotional you know, gadfly that's just looking for the next thing. Grass is always greener. But I love your spirit. That's really, really good. All right, folks. So I teased this a little earlier. You know, I talk about purpose every day on the show. That's what this entire show is about, is you working on purpose and seeing how you will then live on purpose. And, folks, I've talked about this before. There are real health effects, relationship effects to working on purpose. But don't take my word for it. Let's take a look in the news. (laughs) 
headline from a journal entitled Pocket. Headline is a career changed my, excuse me, a career change saved my life. Chronic stress at work obviously affects us physically. Listlessness, that's a physical, just kind of just moping around. You got no juice, no physical juice uh, because you're exhausted. The risk of stroke and heart disease goes up uh, dramatically when we're talking about being overworked. A 2021 study, that's this year, by the World Health Organization found that working at least 55 hours a week was causing hundreds of thousands of premature deaths. I mean... This, this is no joke. Long hours linked to higher risk of stroke and heart disease. Long hours described as a serious health hazard. So they focus on this one gentleman. I mean, there's several, but I'm going to focus on one of these guys, Spencer Carter. Been dealing with uh, missing a lot of work due to stress and the physical effects. His general practitioner warned him that the stress was going to kill him thanks to his astronomically high blood pressure. So he had the opportunity for some voluntary redundancy, and he says, it saved my life. I was drinking heavily. I could feel my relationship falling apart. My behavior became erratic. I couldn't turn it off. I would take a holiday, but I never switched it off. So because of this redundancy package, uh, this is this is in Europe, uh, he turned to his passion. And boy, I love these stories. I love these stories, not because it validates what I'm saying, but because it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt the emotional and physical effects of being who we were created to be. Um, So you know what he does? He had a degree in archaeology. Now, he has the benefit here of this redundancy package is essentially a um, what we would call in the States, um, uh, a compensation package like, hey, you leave, and so we're going to give you this, right? And uh, I, I don't know why I can't think of it. What's the what's the word? Uh, I can't think of it. Anyway, point is he gets this opportunity, and so he's paid, and so he can kind of ease back into this. He doesn't have to go make the same amount of money right away. So what does he do? He gets into the field that he went to school for, archaeology. Lower wage. But he got excited again. He began to feel excitement around his work. So then he figures out, okay, I've clarified and verified. I talk about that on this program all the time. Hey, this is the work. Now, how do I make more money in it? Once he got healthy, once he realized, oh, this is passion. I love the work. The mission, the results of the work matter to me. So he became a specialist in his field, published papers, and made the true successful pivot to a different career. And he said, I believe changing my career actually saved my life, or in this case, prolonged his life. I share that story because I think there are some of you out there who you know you've gotten to a breaking point, emotionally, mentally, physically, maybe all three, and yet you're still afraid to make the pivot. Because you feel like it's not possible. And so you're going to stay in misery because it's what you know. But you're slowly killing yourself. It's that serious. And I'm telling you, there is a path, a very clear path, for you to make the changes necessary. To discover what it is that you're passionate about. To see the missional results in your work every day. And thus change your entire life. If nothing else, call me, 844-747-2577. I'm here every day, and I can help. Your life depends on it. And more importantly than just the health change, other people depend on you being who you were designed to be, to do what you were born to do. It's not just health for us. It's not just making more income, it's seeing the impact of our lives on others. I know you want that, but you got to believe it's possible. So call me.
844-747-2577. Today, my time is almost up. But remember this before I let you go. You matter and you do have what it takes. Until next time, this is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on.